Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's NHL slate um, for today, Thursday, March 23rd. And what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, my own sheets, which are available usually on uh, TrueDFS.com just for premium subscribers. But just today, I'll show you uh, uh, how I use these to uh, look at the slate, to do hand built lineups, and we'll also do a sample build using SaberSim, which is the optimizer, or I like to sometimes say smart randomizer, I like to use to build uh, my hockey lineups. Last night, I had a good night, ended up getting second in the big lottery tournament over there. I uh, got a nice overtime goal from uh, Connor McDavid, assisted by uh, Leon Dreisaitl to kind of get into second, uh, which was nice. I'd forgotten about it, and then the third period came, and I did very, very nicely. So this is a really, really big slate. Um, which is why I like to get kind of a good top-down view of it. But, but for, for now, let's take a look. This is SaberSim, and I'm just showing you this to give you an idea of, of the team totals, um, uh, just to give you an idea of what I think, what types of teams I think should be show up as good plays. So let's just look and see who the highest team totals are. And this is what SaberSim is expecting as far as goals. So 3.4 for Detroit, that, that's not so great. So – Florida approaching four. That's not bad. Washington at four. That's good. Boston at 4.5. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then nobody else over for Vancouver at four. Um, the thing about Boston, before we even get into it, is, again, Boston has been sort of coasting most of the second half of the season. I mean, they they are have an incredible record, and I don't see any reason for them to just push their – push their top guys to play extended minutes. So while they're going to always project to have a good median, <clears throat> we're trying to win like a 12 game slate um, or whatever, however many this is, was it three, six, nine, 11 game slate. You really want ceiling. And I just don't think that playing Boston is you know, the right idea. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, so I'm expecting Florida to be something I would want to see. Washington, somebody I'd want to see, and then Vancouver. That's what I would be expecting. Oh, and then Winnipeg at 3.8. But again, while goals usually translate to fantasy points, I mean, this is a salary-based sport, so it's important to, to see what, what guys can actually fit in your lineup. So here are the sheets that I composed for today, and this is um, – I'm rating these guys again by column G sheets value score – which is a combination of points per dollar and, and just raw fantasy points. And again, I like doing it this way. And I like looking at hockey in this way um, before building using an optimizer. Cause I want to always visualize that what, what guys are kind of near the top of these lists that are going to be from the same teams and, and more to the point, I mean, which, which guys are going to be on the same lines. Um, and if you could find a good blood of players from the same team and, and hopefully from the same lines, all rated really, really well. I mean, those, these are, this is what good plays look like. Um, so first thing you'll notice is that, as I mentioned, Boston is at the top of the list here uh, with Pasternak and Bergeron, um, both in the same power play line. Uh, in addition to that, DeBrusque is also on the first power play line and Marshan is on the first power play line. So, uh, you know, in theory, you, you, Boston is probably going to show up as a good a good team to kind of use as your main stack. But as I mentioned, I mean, I don't think that that's the right thing to do on an 11 game slate. I think you're going to need, you're going to need teams that are just going to, that are not under, I don't know. I don't want to say limitations, but am I hallucinating? I mean, is this, is this kind of a bad way of looking at it? I mean, I don't know, maybe, but look at the standings here. I mean, the Bruins are freaking 54 and 11 with, with, 113 points they have they, they have they have the whole thing locked you know there's literally literally no reason for them to push themselves at all so that's that's a team that i'm just gonna probably avoid that's just, but that's just me um next thing i notice here see a Vetchkin rated high but nobody else in washington see the dallas guy rated high but nobody really from there. actually that's not true so you have hints here as well so you got a couple of guys you do see a good real a good one-off here in, in Tolvan from Seattle. As a matter of fact, he's on the first power play line, Lone McCann. 
So that's that you could start with that maybe, but it's only two guys. Flor Florida. Okay, so you got a Reinhardt who's on the first power play line, a Chuck on the first power play line, or Tagy's on the first power play line. All right, so that's 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 actually probably a good place to start. And then more Boston. Here's the second Detroit guy. Um, well, that's is the first Detroit guy, Perone. And then we don't even get to Matthews till he's down here. So it's gonna be a, a kind of a tricky, I won't say tricky, but it's not gonna be the easiest hand built type type uh day. But what I think that makes sense is to maybe play these Seattle's. You know, because you could play them really, really cheaply, and you can just then fill in with all kinds of other stuff. But you could even play Boston if you wanted to. But maybe you play like a couple of the Floridas, like these three Floridas, with maybe something like these one, two, three Seattle's, and then then you're then you're kind of on to something. So that would be my my attempt to use the sheets to kind of hand build. So why don't why don't we do that? Let's go into the DraftKings lineup builder and let's try to build using those exact players that I just mentioned and see how it kind of see how it kind of works. The one the one guy I did I, I didn't really look at, hold on a minute. Let me pull the sheets back up a second. Is I forgot to note that Patterson is a very highly rated guy from Vancouver. Not really getting anybody else though. Um but maybe it's worth maybe a two man with him and Bouvier, Bouvier or something like that. But let's see what we can build. Let's start with the uh, the Floridas, and those would be the first guys I've mentioned are Reinhardt, Kachuk, and Ver Vertehi. Okay. Now, we're using a bunch of wings, though, which is a little annoying, so you can't really – I don't think this is fair to the Seattles. Because, like, Seattle, they, they're, they're pretty good values tonight. And let's take a look. Where are they? I mean, I'd like to play some of these guys. So, like McCann. Let's get rid of the Floridas for a minute. Let's start with Seattle's. McCann. Um, Tolv Tolvanan. And who else did I say? And then there's Bjork stand. So, all these wings. It's making things extremely difficult. Let's pull the sheets up here again. I mean, this is a this is a problem. I mean, the only centers are from teams that I really didn't didn't mix with anything. Um, are we going to be forced to try to play Boston? All right, let's see what happens. Let's 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 play Boston just because you have the freaking center. It's so annoying. If is this, this going to build this easily at a seven o'clock freaking game? Is that what's going to happen? You're going to play Boston with Seattle, and that's going to be the end of it. So you play Bergeron, you play Pasternak, and then you play um, DeBrusque, and then Marchand. Even but then again, you have this this glut of wings, which make things a little bit little bit tricky, actually. Hmm. So who are the centers besides this? So that's gonna be a weird slate. What if you started with Patterson and then you you took like took some liberties with the projection? You went to Bouvalier and you could play then JT Miller. You could play two centers. And and you have Miller's on the first power play line, Bouvier's on the first power play line. And Patterson, I believe, is on the first power play line. So you could do like a Vancouver stack. And what that does is let you play the centers. So let's just start over. We'll go with Vancouver. Where is he all the way over here? Another late night Aaron. We go Patterson, Miller. Hold on. Patterson, Miller, Bouvier. And then we could play these wings that we talked about for Seattle. If we want to, or we could probably even play. Can we play all these Floridas, not even need Seattle. I mean, can you play? Oh, Chuck's so expensive. 
Chagy and uh, Reinhardt. Yeah, you can't do all this. So that's the thing about the Florida is Kachuk is really expensive. But well, Pedersen's eighty eight hundred. He's no bargain either. So let's let's go back to the Seattle's that we mentioned. And that would be McCann, Bork stand, and Tolvanen. And this you could do. And then you play a goalie, and I would just basically play the cheapest priced goalie that projects well. And that would be, well, he's not too cheap. Uh, Igor, there you go, 7,300. So we'll play Igor. And then what do we have left? And he's we know he's playing. He's, so now we have 5,300 a man. So you can pick either the Vancouver guy from the to fill out that power play or the Seattle guy to fill out that power play and then a one off at defense. And I think that's actually not bad. Um, so just to see who that would be. Let's uh, Carlson defense, Burns defense. None of these defensemen look really good. Quinn, Quinn Hughes. So he'd be the guy to play on Seattle. And then you probably look for a one-off of some kind at 5,400 to play your defense. So you have the three Seattles, you have four Vancouver's, and one defenseman. Uh, and I will leave that to you to find one. But again, the way you would use the sheets to do that, if you couldn't figure this out, is you could search by position and it still resorts by sheets value score. You find someone, you know, that 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 fits what you want to do and you put it in. So let's just for, for so the, the one that would show up here would be Serga Sergachev or whatever. So we could we could we could put that in. But again, just that's just to save the that's just to save the spot. All right. So now let's go to um to Sabersim and let's see what we would get if we built um using Sabersim. Now I think hockey is probably one of the sports where you get the most incremental benefit of using Sabersim because so much about hockey is about finding that correct correlation. And while I think I know which guys correlate well because of their line values and stuff, what Sabersim does is actually do that math and figure out which guys correlate with which guys. So I would really trust Sabersim to build, you know, most MME lineups as far as um, uh, NHL goes. But you have to, you do have to start with some good projections. So uh, not that Sabersims themselves are bad, but I do like my, my kind of industry weighted approach uh, along with a little TLC to put our own stuff up there and we will rule out players. We'll replace Sabersons with our own and we'll build say, I don't know, 40 lineups. And, and the first thing that I, well, not the first thing, but the first thing I will do after these builds, I want to see what types of lineups are built before I even see who is in them. Okay. Um, but I think it's just going to flash who's in them already, so I'm not going to be able to uh, to uh, to stop that. Let's just see. Let's see if I can like stop it before it even shows. Okay. So stack types. Let's look. So first of all, the stack types look like the types of stacks I want to play for the most part. Four threes, five twos. I don't really like the four twos, so I would probably X these out. I would X out the four twos. I would X out the three threes. I think that on the big slate, you could be sort of greedy and demand, you know, good correlative, pure. Five zeros are kind of tough because you get three one-offs. But for now, we could just kind of leave this. So we have the stack types we want. Now, I wonder what types of, what teams we actually get. It's probably going to be West of Boston's, right? No, look at that, Seattle. Let's go. As I thought, look at that. So we would be we would be on Seattle. But the funny, the five man stacks would not come from these uh, Seattle. The five man stacks come from Washington, Winnipeg, and Boston. It's the three mans that are really coming from Seattle because of those three guys. It's very interesting. So what I would do is I would you know save as a file. Throw them up here and save them. Um, 
I like to enter the dummy lineups at the beginning of the day just so I know I have something because I get really, really busy and I don't want to um, don't want to get shut out of the tournaments. And I think that's better, at least for me, than re just reserving them. Um, yeah. And I already have something in the other one. And that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm not going to be around live tonight, but that's kind of the process that I would use to go through and do hand built and get and 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 to go through and do uh you saber sim to build MME stuff. Now again the slate's gonna look a little different after lines are released and goalies are announced and injuries come in, all that stuff. But again, you know, I, I want to do these videos for you to show not necessarily how to play tonight's slate, although that's obviously a big part of it, but um but to figure out how to play other slates like it as they as they come up. Um again if you like this you want to get more of the premium stuff. You go to truedfs.com and sign up and you get some you get some kind of bonus, some kind of free stuff. I'm not sure what, but go check that out. Good luck.